everybody, it's Mike from America um, on a very, very sad day, uh, but one where we celebrate the life and memory of David Rocky Rocastle. Uh, absolutely my favorite footballer to ever step onto the pitch. Um, fortunate enough in the late 80s, 30 some odd years ago now, to, to be able to watch him play week in and week out. Um, and even though I was at the time a 15 and 16 year old American kid who was really just discovering the amazing nature of the, uh, of the English game and, and of Arsenal itself, didn't really fully appreciate what I was seeing, but it was so clear that there was a special, uh, special nature to this player and found out many, many years later, uh, in talking to his teammates and his, family and, and anyone who really came across him about how wonderful of a human being he really was and that that transcended his football, you know, as hard as it is to believe that in, in ways that affected so many people. And I, I feel for his family, Ryan, uh, your sisters, your, your mother, Janet, uh, such a wonderful family um, and uh, the greater Arsenal family you got to experience and know David as, as a footballer and as a person. A real credit to Arsenal and the very, very definition of the Arsenal way. So uh, here's to remembering David. Uh, everything about the club that we love is instilled inside him, and, uh, and we miss you terribly. Rocky Rowcastle, I was one of the many, many that saw him play, and I was so fortunate to do that. Saw him play many times at Highbury and also some away games. Twice at Old Trafford I saw him play, once when he got sent off in his first season. For us, and uh, a couple of years later, when he scored that wonderful chip against Schmeichel. Also, I was at Villa Park when he scored our second goal with a great lob. He was a fine footballer, he could do anything. He was fast, he was skillful, he was strong, had a heart of a lion, and you knew he was there for every teammate on that pitch. He gave everything. And there's not a lot of players around like that now. He has got so much respect, not just through the Arsenal supporters, but other supporters, because they actually realised what it was all about. You saw that in this Tottenham game on the day that he sadly passed away, the respect the Spurs supporters showed. And also you see on social media, people have got a lot of respect for the guy, because of, as I say, they actually realised what a gem he was. Off the field you hear so many, though I've never met him before, you hear so many stories of what a genuine guy he was. Who always seemed to have that smile on his face. No, he'd be sadly missed. Sadly missed. Only 33 years old, that was a tragedy. And also, it's a shame that he only played for us up to the age of 25. Let's, let's just think what he could have won with us. And let's think what we could have won because of him. Anyway, I'm so, as I say, I'm very happy that I watched him play live. It was wonderful and great memories, and long live the memory of Rocky Rowcastle. David Rocky Rowcastle, 20 years, where has the time gone? Time passes by so quickly. If ever a player represented everything that was good about Arsenal, it was him. To think that the fans still sing his name with so much heart and desire is testament to him and what he achieved as a player and how he identified with the fans. Just a fantastic, fantastic footballer who made teammates around him also play better, play well, had so much heart and desire for the club and wanted to do well for the club and himself and always put himself as part of the collective of that famous Arsenal side in the, in the early 90s, which was my formative years as an Arsenal fan and such a special time to be an Arsenal fan. And uh, we miss him dearly and just absolutely proud as a fan to have seen him play live and also to celebrate the fact that he's been part of our history. He represents everything that's good about Arsenal. Up the Arsenal. Hello, Andrew Tinkaguna here, giving you my thoughts on my favourite player of all time, David Rowcastle, who sadly passed away 21 years ago, 20 years ago, I beg your pardon, and uh, still miss the guy all the time, still think about David all the time. He's the one really that gave me and really solidified my love of Arsenal in the first place. Um, whilst a lot of my schoolmates in London, um, South East London, the area where David himself and Dean Wright grew up, my school 
was right near uh, the area. We used to play their school all the time, um, Crofton Park. My school was Mallory. And um, I suppose that really was big, a big part of the reason why David was, was such a special player to me because I grew up in and around the area where he was from as well. Um, but yeah, a lot of my school friends were Liverpool fans at the time because they were dominating football. Um, so I was uh, one of not many Arsenal fans at my school, believe it or not. And uh, they had John Barnes and then we had David Rowcastle, who I believe Although I, I love John Barnes as a player as well, he scared the life out of me when we, whenever we played them. To me, David Rowcastle was a more all-round complete player than John Barnes. He could do everything. You could put him anywhere on a pitch, David Rowcastle, and he would survive and thrive. He had the skill and the, the technical ability of a, a top Brazilian player, but he also had this this real strength and power and strong attitude of your typical British player as well. And some of the goals he scored we've all seen. My favourite goal of all time being the one he scored where I was actually present at the ground which was made it even more special. When he scored the slalom running dribble past about six players against Middlesbrough which and stuck it in the top right hand corner. And it was just amazing to be there on that day and see that in person. And those are the sort of moments that I will forever treasure. Also being at the match away to Aston Villa the same season as the Middlesbrough goal. When he uh, did that amazing sort of chest and lob from about 35, 40 yards into the back of their net. And... Uh, I also had my lowest moment at a football match when I nearly saw him die in front of my eyes when the amazing Gary Lewin saved his life by uh, fishing his uh, his tongue out of his throat that was uh, blocking his airwaves. And he, was, he was technically dead for a minute or two on the pitch and um, I was only literally maybe about 15, 20 feet away from him when it happened um, and I just had to tear rolling down my, my, the side of my face because uh, I thought that we'd lost him on the pitch right in front of me. And I was only a young kid at the time. But uh, yeah, Gary Lewin had to famously break his jaw to to actually get uh, the obstruction cleared and, uh, and saved his life. So I've been through a, an awful lot in my time with, uh, with David Rowcastle. I never met him to speak to. I've seen him in person several times and outside the ground I saw him sort of on the uh, outside Highbury a few times when those were the days when you can actually see the players arriving at the ground and, and walking up to it. Um, I wish I'd had the chance to speak to him because, you know, he, if, everyone, everyone loved him and no one had a bad word to say about him. He was a wonderful person off the pitch and a wonderful player on it as well. So I will always miss him. And he will always be in my heart. And I'm very, very proud of the way that the club have remembered him as well recently and in the past. So he may be gone, but he will never be forgotten. R.I.P. David. Stan, mm -hmm. who is David Rowcastle? David Rowcastle? <laughs> No, well, that's the name I heard in a long time, man. David Rowcastle, he's like one of the original Broccoli Boys. Broccoli Boys? Yeah. You mean where you're from? Well, it's me, right? I'm from like Nuned, Topper Peckham. Been to a lot of mad parties over there, but I will tell you something, man. It's not a nice place to like get caught out after dark. It's quite a rough area. He used to play for Arsenal. Hmm, what position did he play? David Rowcastle, man, he was a right winner. Wore the number seven shirt. Was he any good, though? <laughs> was he any good? Oh, mate, listen. Full winger, right? Loves bringing it into the middle of the park. Can take the ball past the man. In fact, I've seen the geezer take it past three or four men. 
and you can put it in the back of the net. Loves a chip as well. But you know what? As much as you love all that creative stuff, he used to do all the dirty work as well. He could track back and win the ball on the tackle. Seven years he played for us. I think it was like 228 appearances, 34 goals, two league titles, and one league cup. Impressive. Not bad, huh? Well, I'll leave you to read your book. All right. Hi, this is Mike McDonald. Um, just wanted to share my Rocky Road Castle story. Uh, for me, he was many things to me, but I suppose the um, best memory I have of him was um, chipping the keeper at Uni um, for United at Old Trafford. And I remember going to the park afterwards and diligently practicing chipping with both feet. And then that was, as I grew up to be um, a decent player, I would, uh, often chipped the keeper and um, that was because of that moment. He inspired me and I think that's the best word. I found David Rowcastle inspiring. I mean, what can you say about um, Rocky Rowcastle? Just uh, an amazing player, an amazing man. And even now, 20 years later, I still can't really believe that he's gone. For me, the first time I became aware of David Rowcastle was 1983, um, just in the match programme. They used to feature the youth and the reserve teams and, and his name kept popping up. He was doing some good stuff and, you know, you started to get the feeling that he was going to be one of these players that was going to come through. He had a lot of good young players at that time. And of course, I was at his league debut for the club, September 1985, a very dull, shall we say, nil-nil draw against Newcastle, but his performance on the right-hand side of midfield really stood out. I think he was only 18 at the time, 17 or 18, and you could see he was going to be something special, but it wasn't just his ability on the pitch that stood out, it was his character. Obviously, he went through a difficult childhood, didn't he? His dad died when he was very young, and he had a lot of responsibility in his home life as well, and you could see that that came across on his professional life as well. He was a natural leader. And even though he was young, you could see even then when he was a teenager, what an inspirational character he was to the other players around him in the team. Of course, the great goals as well. I mean, how could we possibly not mention those? There were so many that, that stood out for me. Probably the best one was the one against Middlesbrough. I think it was November 1988. It was in the title winning season. An important goal it was as well because we ended up winning the league didn't we, on goals scored so every goal was important that season and this goal was a special one a slalom run the ball seemed stuck to his right foot seemed to take on the whole Middlesbrough defence and then hit a shot into the top corner it went in off the post um, fantastic goal that was one of many that he scored he wasn't necessarily scored a lot of goals did he 30 I think it's 34 maybe in his Arsenal career but most of them were memorable there was of course the goal at Aston Villa when he chested it down and, and lobbed it over the goalkeeper Nigel Spink, that was a great goal again in that same season. Another important goal helped us to a 3 0 victory again. Every goal, as I say, was important that season. That was another big one. The goal in the League Cup that season at Anfield, smashing it into the corner in front of the away end. Another great goal. And of course, the one at Manchester United in 1991. There when he brushed off Paul Ince and Brian Robson before chipping Peter Schmeichel again in front of the away fans. Some more great memories from the great man. Of course, he did help us to win two league titles and the League Cup as well in 1987. The goal at Tottenham in the semi-final, last minute winner with his left foot as well. Again, right in front of the away end. He turned a light scoring, didn't he, in front of the away fans. Um, some great goals and some great memories. But for me, really, it was just about his character as well. I did have the pleasure of briefly meeting him once so it was outside Highbury actually. I was up there picking up some tickets and um, he just happened to walk past. I think he'd been at the stadium for one reason or another. It was during the time when he was out of the team injured. Me and my mate were both sort of surprised to see him. Um, so we had a brief little chat with him. He signed uh, the match ticket for me on the back. Um, was asking him whether he was going to be fit for the game and that kind of stuff. He was just a very nice down to earth guy. Always had time for people. And they're the sort of things that I really remember about him. So yeah. 20 years ago, it's time's flown, isn't it? I mean, we all remember that North London derby on the day when it was announced. Um, really, really sad day, wasn't it, uh, against Tottenham. And uh, respect to the Tottenham fans as well for the tributes that they paid that day as well. Um, so that, that was a really emotional moment, wasn't it, for, for all of us, really. And I don't think any of us could really believe 
what had happened uh, for me personally, of course, he died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which uh, is the same illness that unfortunately um, cost my sister's life as well. She was just 28 when she died. So it maybe affected me maybe a little bit more um, because of that reason. Uh, I understood maybe what he had gone through, very similar to my sister. So, but yeah, a, a fantastic player, a fantastic man and an absolute Arsenal legend. I, I don't think anybody would ever have a bad word to say about him. You know, just, just brilliant and so many great memories. Uh, and yeah, just really wanted to wanted to give um, a little tribute to the great man on this uh, anniversary of his sad passing, um, David Rocky Rowcastle, R.I.P.